Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In this video, we're going to be looking at the live aiming crosshair. Now, I've made a, a video explaining why I personally don't think this is a good idea um, in sort of fast-paced shooting games, uh, purely because of the way that the, the sort of the crosshair jumps around. Um, but I'll give you a quick demo in case you're un unfamiliar with what I'm on about. Um, so effectively what we've got here is the ALS uh, project and we've added in a crosshair. So at the moment, because we're not aiming, we don't have a crosshair. We can we can change that if, if you like. Um, but as soon as you start to aim, you get a crosshair on the screen. Now, when you're not hitting something, let's say your, your gun's out of range, um, there's nothing within the range of the crosshair. It, it's red. And then as soon as the bullet is going to hit something, it becomes green. And you can see that the crosshair is basically following exactly where that bullet is going to make collision with something in the world. And this is really neat because if you're coming over to uh, some boxes like this, you know, you might be coming over to the edge and you might just want to shoot past it. But as soon as your the, the barrel or the bullet is going to clip the object in front of the gun, you can see that the crosshair moves along with it. So if we use the idle animation here as a, as a good... Um, example you can see how my idle sway is kind of making me clip the edge of this box from time to time um, which is really neat it's actually a really good indicator to know exactly where the bullets going M just a quick example of why I think this might not be super great on shooting games is if I'm aiming at this crowd of people um, you can see as my bullet sort of snaps on to each of the people um, it's actually really difficult to quickly gauge where the bullets actually going to go because your brain wants to see a crosshair um, as the thing to aim for um, but the, the crosshair is actually moving around as you're trying to aim it um, I hope that makes sense. So essentially you, your crosshair might be here and you think right I only need it to be here slightly but in reality um, the object that's moving, it, it moves around. You, you're effectively trying to aim a moving target, and it, it, it's really difficult. However, um, I don't want to turn this into that same video. Um, enough people have, have asked me how to do it, so um, let's let's just jump straight into that, I guess. Okay, so I've just created a brand new, fresh, um, advanced locomotion system project. Um, I'm using 5.1 just for reference, but this should work in all of the other ones too. Um, Okay, so, oh, there we go. So that shade is finally complete. So this is a, a fresh scene. Um, nothing's changed. So at the moment, we don't really have anything. Uh, we don't have a line trace system or anything. We don't really have a crosser. So first thing I'm going to do. Um, now, you may have, may have noticed in my video, the crosshair went from red to green. Um, so the first thing I actually want to do, I'm just going to modify um, the existing arrow. So if you go to the advanced locomotion v4 blueprints and UI, you'll find this arrow now um, I want a white arrow because then I can change the color on the fly myself um, What we want to do is just go to the saturation change that to zero and that just whites it out um, saves you having to mess around with a second arrow um, That's pretty much it to be fair um, and then the next thing I'm going to create a user interface and I'm going to do a widget blueprint and I'm going to call this uh, WBP for widget blueprint underscore uh, crosshair like that. Open that up. And all I want is an image. So nothing special, just an image. I'm going to have this um, desired on screen. And under the brush on the right hand side, I'm going to drop that down, go to image, search for arrow, find the arrow texture. Um, the size I actually want to be 25 by 25 nice and small and I think at this point that's pretty much it unless I forgot about something which then I'll fix later on so for now compile and save the crosshair um, okay so what I want to do is go to the ALS hood which is the default hood that comes with this project uh, and you can see the arrows already kind of there because it is used for something else in the in the existing tools I'm not that bothered uh, but what I am going to do is I'm going to scroll down in the palette and go to user created and look for WBP crosshair 
and just drag it out anywhere you want. Uh, I'm going to do size to content and for now that is pretty much it. However, my alignment I'm going to set to 0.5 and 0.725. Um, but I wouldn't worry too much about that for now. I'm going to go for a center anchor and I'm going to set the position to zero and the Y to zero. And you'll understand now why that alignment is important. If, if I should have done that first, to be honest, if I put the alignment to zero and zero, you'll see that what it's doing is it's, it's sort of doing from the top corner downwards as a square. So changing the alignment to 0.5 centers it on the anchor and then changing it to 0 0.725 on the Y is as close as I think I need to get it where the tip of the arrow is actually in the center. Uh, so that's the reason for that. But we are going to update this in the blueprint live anyway um, because every time we make a change to the anchor's position to get it to move around the screen, um, you need to reset the alignment anyway because otherwise it sets it back to 0, 0 and your aim goes weird. But don't worry about that for now. Um, effectively, you just want size to content, um, center anchor, and then zero zero. But again, we are going to update all of these stats live in the blueprint, so they're not too critical. Um, but it, it it just gives you a nice idea of what's going on. Uh, compile, and I think at this point we should now go to the line trace part of it. So then we've got some data to use to feed the rest of the system. So go back to your map. Um, or just go back to your content browser, um, go to the advanced locomotion system, blueprints, character logic, and open up your ALS Animan character. Okay, so this should be as basic as it is, to be honest. Um, there's not really anything going on here um, that's that we, we're interested in. Um, for me, I only want to do stuff when I'm aiming. So one quick thing for me, I'm just going to sort of hard code right mouse button. Uh, not this one. Uh, right mouse button. So this one, right mouse button. Now, obviously, you can use the advanced, uh, sorry, the en enhanced input system and add this correctly. Um, or you can use the legacy system and add it as an action. Um, for this video, I keeping it simple and I'm just going to hard code the input actions but you can you can sort of set these up however you like so right mouse button um, I want to create a variable for aiming with a question mark um, a lot of people don't like the fact that I put question marks and stuff in my variable names but if it works I think what the hell um, I'm doing, going to do a set so when I press it I want it to be set and when I release the button I don't want it to be set so that's my condition for are we aiming? So that's absolutely sorted. Now, I also want a shoot button. Left uh, mouse button is going to be a shoot for me. And I only really want to shoot if I'm aiming. Because if I'm not aiming, I don't want the gun to be able to be fired. And that's pretty much it for us for now. Okay, so... What we need to do is we need to get um, a position from our gun's barrel into the world um, to see if it hits anything effectively. Now, because this is obviously UI and you don't want your crosser to suddenly stop working, um, we're going to do everything from the tick. Now, line traces are pretty inexpensive, so doing a line trace every tick isn't necessarily a bad thing unless you've got millions of millions of them um they're not really that performance hungry so don't worry too much about us doing this on a tick however there are a lot of things i wouldn't do on a tick uh, but that's another video um right so what we're going to do is we're going to do a line trace so line trace by channel so we'll scroll up line trace by channel plug that in um, I'm going to have the channel visibility, uh, channel as visibility. I'm going to set the debug type, uh, the draw debug type to one frame. Um, obviously, on tick, I wouldn't do duration because you're going to have a million lines on your screen. But for one single frame, 
because you're probably ticking every frame anyway, you're just going to get a single line trace. For now, that's pretty good because we're, we're, we need it to debug. Whoops, I'm just going to drag this over here a little bit. Okay, so our starting position is going to be the muzzle or the barrel of the gun, um, exactly at the end of the gun. So just to make this a little bit easier to understand, I'm going to go back to my advanced locomotion folder, go to props, go to meshes, and I'm going to find the M4A1 rifle. Now, just before we go into that any further, just take note that this uh, weapon is a skeletal mesh, uh, and that'll make a bit more sense later when we sort of uh, finish off the line trace. Okay, so um, what I'm looking for here is what direction is considered forward for this mesh. Um, now, typically in Unreal, our forward axis is the X axis. So if you used to use a node like get forward vector, um, that would effectively use the X as its default forward. Now, looking at this mesh, um, unfortunately, because of the... <laughs> typically, X is normal, um, but the sort of forward direction or the way that the gun is pointing is actually on the Y. So that would be considered the right vector. Um, so I'm saying this because depending on the meshes you've got, this might not work with what you have. Um, you may need to use the forward vector or the right vector. But for, for these weapons, you're going to be using the right vector. So, um, first of all, we need to get a reference to our mesh so we can find uh, the gun. So, the way that this system works is um, we've got this held object root in our components list. And we're either going to be holding a weapon, which, as we've just checked, was a skeletal mesh. Or um, it's going to be holding a static mesh, which is like the torches, the binoculars, or the barrel and stuff like that. Um, I'm only interested in the guns, so I'm going to grab skeletal mesh. Um, I'm going to get socket, uh, spell it right, get socket location. Now, what's the name of our socket? So I'm going to go back to this gun and I'm going to find the end of the barrel. So you can click, eh, you should be able to. Uh, anyway, I'm going to select muzzle and you can see here in the hierarchy, um, muzzle. Have I disabled bone names or something? Because it should show you all of the bones. Um, show all bones, see, it should be. I don't, I don't understand why they're not. Show all sockets. Interesting. Yeah, that's not really what I wanted. But um, you can see here that the, the the socket at the end is is that is our muzzle. So effectively, we want the location of that muzzle. Uh, how's it spelled? All lowercase. So let's type that in. Muzzle. So this is going to ask for the location of this muzzle, which is absolutely fine, and that's going to be our start location. So that's as simple as that. Now. Um, we need to go in the direction that the gun's facing. So like I mentioned earlier, we need the sort of forward vector. But because our mesh has been made sideways, um, we're going to be using our right vector. So drag that. Get right vector. Um, so this is going to tell us which direction is forward in a sense, but has took the misalignment of the mesh into consideration. So we're using a right vector. So you can see here, get the right or Y unit direction for this component. Um, because our guns, I'm repeating myself here, but because the, the forward direction of our gun is Y, we need to use the right vector. Um, whereas get forward vector, forward vector, um, uses that X coordinate. Anyway, so the right vector is going to tell us which direction the gun is pointing. Um, but it's, it's got no distance to it. It's it's purely just a... This is the way it's angled, in a sense. Um, so we need to add some distance to it. So let's multiply this. So do a multiplication. Um, but we want to multiply it by a, a float value. So a, a distance, really. So let's um, convert this pin to a float, single or double. I, I don't think that really matters too much for us. I'm actually going to promote this to a variable, so then I know what it is, and I'm going to call this weapon range. Weapon range. I'm going to hit compile so I can set it, 
and I'm going to set this to 3000. Nice number. Obviously, you play around with these numbers for the effect that you're after. So we've got where we started from and we've got which direction and a range. So what we want to do is we want to add these two together to say start from here, go 3000 in this direction and that's our end location. Um, so we will add these two together just like that and that becomes our end location. Uh, and this is just a basic line trace. Um, Typically, in a first person, you'd have this as your camera location, and that'd be a first person um, shooting system. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit compile, and I'm going to hit play, and you should see, um, well, nothing actually. You can see there's a line trace on the ground, kind of following where our character stands, because we don't have our weapon drawn. So nothing's going on because our weapon's not drawn. As soon as I pull the rifle out, you should see that now that I've got this line trace which is following exactly where my gun is pointing. So if I go to aim, you'll see now that um, we're getting that line trace coming from exactly the barrel into the world where it's, it's pointing. Um, obviously, our crosshair is centered. Um, but obviously because of the idol of our animation, you can see that that's weaving all over the place. So this is where we need to update that screen position, um, or the, the crosshair position, to be exactly where the end of that trace is going to be. Um, yep, I mean, there are a few other steps uh, that I'd like to go through first, just to make this a bit more complete. Um, Obviously, this is just spitting out this line trace, so our range is 3,000. Um, so if something stands only a 1,000 in front of us, we're not going to be taking that into consideration. It's just going to be giving us the end result all the time. Um, and we also need to know whether we've hit something or we haven't. Um, to get that sort of uh, different colored crosshair. So I personally picked red if it's not hit anything um, in its range and green if it's hitting something within its range. Um, and this is where we can sort of double up on the line traces. Um, so what I want to do is just before we continue, I'm going to use this out hit result, which gives you all the information of what you may hit. Um, and one of them options is, do we actually hit something? Um, so blocking hit, I'm just going to promote that to a variable. Um, so that's going to be a, a true or false. Did we hit something or did we not? And then obviously there's some other information which is pretty neat. So like impact location, uh, stuff like that, and what actor we've hit. So you can do other stuff with, with this if you want, where maybe it only highlights when it hits enemies, actors, or, or something like that. But I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Um so from that, what I actually want to do is a second line trace. So line trace by channel. And I'm, I'm not going to duplicate myself. I'm going to just put a reroute node. So you can type in reroute and you get one of these little anchors. Pretty neat. Um, I'm also going to do the same for this. Reroute. Whoop. Reroute. So one of them is my start location. So whoops. Just drag that in, maybe put another reroute, so like there. And then end location, plug that in, and maybe put a reroute, maybe just below it like that, kind of. Have these crossover wherever you want. Um, so we're effectively duplicating the, the line trace, which is absolutely fine. Um, again, I'm gonna, I'm going to leave this one as none because it's just going to repeat the same line trace. Uh, so there's no point in really duplicating it. Yeah, so then I've actually just thought of an improvement I might be able to make on my own projects. Um, we might not actually need this, this second line trace at all. I think I might have just left... I. It's hard to explain, but I did... Um, in my in one of my other crosshair videos, I actually do a line trace from the camera and from the barrel. So I needed two line traces, and I've kind of adapted this into this video, 
but I don't think we actually need it. Um, <laughs> if you're watching this, I was right, and we didn't need it. If you don't, well, if this video doesn't go live, I've remade it because I was wrong. <laughs> um, but effectively, what we want to do now is we want to take our end line trace, and we want to get that that position on the screen. Um, and if we do hit something, we want to get the impact points position on the screen because um, they're going to be two different locations. Um, so hopefully this doesn't sort of mess me up now, but um, let's just go ahead and convert these into screen spaces. So um, what you want to do is get your player controller uh, because that's going to handle um, sort of like the projection to screen to world or world to screen. Um, and what we want to do is we want to uh, project um, world to screen. So that's going to require um, a world position. So if we do hit something, um, let's say, one sec, let's, let's drag a branch off this. So if, um, if this hit ends up being true, we want to get the impact location. So wherever we hit within the world, um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to promote this screen position to a variable, just a screen. So if we hit something is true, uh, we want this to be our screen position. However, if it's false, we want the trace end to be our screen position. So I'm just going to copy this uh, project world to screen, plug in our player controller, take our trace end as our world position. And if false, I'm um, going to do the same here so I'm just going to duplicate this screen position um, I'm making this a bit messy now so false screen position so just to go over that so we're doing a line trace from the muzzle in the direction of the gun via its range that's going to feed our line trace our line trace is either going to hit something or it isn't so if it does hit something and that ends up being true we're going to take the impact location of that um that projectile and then we're going to convert that world space into a screen space position and set set that as a variable and um, if we don't hit something uh, and that ends up being false instead we're going to take the end of the trace uh, because we're not going to have an impact location um because we've not hit anything um, so that's actually going to be zero effectively there isn't going to be a hit point so instead we're going to get take the end of the trace which would be 3000 units um, in, in, in front of us and we're going to set that as our screen position so with these screen positions because one of these is purely just um, it's just an X and a Y where on the screen is is it hitting um, and this is going to be able to feed our uh, user interface uh, to say where to put the crosser on the screen. Um, so we need to move over now to the UI. Okay, so let's let's jump over to the UI. Um, so you want to go over to your ALS HUD um, where we put the arrow at the beginning and we're going to nip over to the graph. Um, so where are we at the moment? So we're not in the event graph here. So let's scroll up go to the main event graph okay so this is it so this is the main event graph for the ALS project um, so we're not going to mess with any of this stuff because we don't want to break the current functionality um, I mean do that you will um, but I'm not going to do it um, I'm going to add a pin because I need to do a, another load of things um, and in preparation I'm just going to drag this down here type in reroute add that there and that's ready for us to sort of set our locations. But before we do, we just need to prepare our um, our aim widget um, as a canvas panel. Um, the reason is, is canvas panels have um, anchors and positions that you can move around um, and you can set them. Uh, without doing this, you won't be able to sort of move it around live or in real time. Um, but we need to we need to do that right at the beginning. So we're going to do an event construct, which is effectively the um, event begin play, but for UI. Um, so on construct, so when the UI is is constructed, um, we need to get a reference to our crosshair. So scroll down to your variables, drag out your WBP crosshair. Um, we're going to say slot as canvas slot. 
and what you want to do is promote that to a variable uh, I'm going to call this one cross her um, canvas slot yeah just like that appropriately named plug that in and then there's one other thing that we're going to need to do um, is we're going to need to get a reference to our player um, because we're going to need to know that screen position that we've just made with our line trace so um, let's start with a get player character is it character yep um, and then because our player character is the ALS anim man I'm going to do a cast to ALS and then let's find which one it is so it's not the base character it's going to be the anim man character BP plug that in and then again I'm just going to promote this to a variable so then I have um, all the information on on hand as a reference so as ALS anim man character uh, and that that should be um, all we need I'm going to do a compile just to make sure I've got no errors um, and then I think the first thing I need to do is get that screen position so we've got something to work with so drag our ALS anim man reference so get uh, from that we're going to need that screen position so get that now the screen position as I showed you earlier is an X and Y we need to split this so you can do right click and split struct pin and that gives you the X and Y then what we're going to need to do is so then this depending on the size of your screen we don't we don't want the size of the screen to sort of um, affect the screen positions X and Y um, so we're just gonna we're gonna get the viewport size because um, if you hard code it um, and somebody resizes the screen or if somebody's on I don't know playing at 1440 instead of 1080 um, or in 4k it's gonna be different uh, so we may as well just get the screen size and again we're going to split this so we've got the raw x and y uh, and we need to divide these from each other um, so there's no differences between the two and this is effectively going to give us our anchor points um, so let's just do a divide off that one and i'll pop that down there like that and a divide off that one so we need to divide both of these um actually I'm just gonna pop that like that, like that. So divide the x of one by the x of another and the y of one by the y of another. That actually that seems wrong. I think we need to divide the y by the screen y and vice versa, the opposite way around. So divide that by that. I think that's the right way around. You want to take the screen position first as the top pin and then divide it by the bottom pin. We'll find out in a minute when, when it doesn't make sense. Um, <laughs> which which I, respectfully I understand is not a, um, a good thing to say. Um, I need to nip back to the designer. I think I need to set the anchors here as um, as bindable maybe. Bear with me a sec, I'm, I've actually forgot something. Okay, so it's just a bit of manual intervention, to be honest. Um, so what we need to do is we need to make a 2D vector from these two. So this one's going to be the X and this one's going to be whoops, the Y. And then we're going to promote this to a variable. So promote to a variable, but we're going to call this one anchors. Um, you could put crosshair anchors if you're going to do this with multiple things, but anchors, that's absolutely fine. And then finally we can plug that into our executable, just like that. So we've got our anchors. Um, we're going to need to make another one of these, but call it a line. Um, so I'm going to right click on the anchors, duplicate and call it alignment. Alignment, like that. Um, I'm just going to drag that out and set it. So I'm going to do this manually. And I'm manually going to type in. No, actually. Bear with me a sec. 
this is where it gets a little bit confusing because you, you actually have to do this step backwards slightly, but I'm trying to make it linear. But it's I've confused myself. I'm going to get the... I need the canvas slot, the, cram, the cross her canvas slot. Get that. I'm going to do a set alignment. Okay. And then I need... I need to promote that to a variable as in alignment. I'm going to set the in alignment, but I'm going to split the in alignment into an X and Y. So the X is going to be 0 0.5 and the Y is going to be 0 0.725. So if you remember from earlier when I said um, to get the crosshair itself um, in line with its anchor point, here with the alignment effectively this is what I've done I've took the alignment and I've split it and I'm just manually setting the X and Y so back to the graph so that's what this is um, because obviously we're setting this here uh, that just plugs in nicely there so we'll plug that in so we'll have the alignment set um, then we need to set the anchor point so from the canvas slot again set anchors And obviously we've already made the anchors here, so let's just drag this off and pl plug that into that. Um, get anchors. Yeah, okay, so why is that not so? The anchor structure itself is its own thing. So again, this is where working backwards was actually a benefit. So that's been promoted to a variable. I'm going to delete our anchors one now, which breaks that. I'm going to set that here, and again, that's not actually working, so why not? Hmm. Um, let me just have a look at this, have I overlooked something again? So there's, there's a lot to this, and UI I'm not too familiar with, so in minimum and in maximum they actually want to be the same thing so maybe I wasn't wrong originally I'm gonna promote this back to a variable anchors plug this back in I do apologize if I've lost you here I'm really sorry about that so for my anchors, I'm going to drag that out and I'm going to plug this into both of them. So, yep, that's slightly better than I remember doing it. Let's make this a bit neater. Ish. Um, I've got one more and that's going to be set position. Whoops. Position. Now we're actually going to leave this as zero. Um, so there's, there's nothing too critical though like that um, and that's pretty much it to be honest um, that should work um, however we're going to also change the color of our crosser depending on whether we hit something so getting our um, ALS animam character reference get we should have that reference to blocking hit uh, which arguably you could go back and rename to um, something like aim hit or um, weapon hit something like that compile go back so we've got weapon hit um, if this is true so a branch uh, we then want to get our image color um, our crosshair just just our crosser not actually the um, not the slot and we want to set a color um, so is it color opacity or foreground color I think it's foreground let's split that I think it's this so if it's true let me set my foreground color to green and let's duplicate that and if it ends up being false let's plug this in let's 
let's have this as red. So let's type that into zero. So hopefully that should be right. So if I don't hit something, it'll be red. And if I do hit something, it will be green. Um, are we forgetting anything? Let's check. So now pull out my rifle. So my color's not updated, but we're definitely getting our crosshair updating. So maybe it wasn't the uh, foreground. So let's delete those. Let's drag that off. Whoops. Set color and opacity. Um, doo -doo -doo. To true. Let's split this. Uh, let's not split that. That looks horrible. <laughs> let's just pick that. Uh, in color and opacity for a hit is going to be green. Green like that. Um, duplicate. Change color to yeah, pink. Don't matter, does it? Put that into there. Compile. Play. Please change color. So it's green. So that's good to start with. And when we don't hit something, it goes red. So you can see now, if I get close to the wall, wherever the bullet's going to hit, that crosser now jumps. Now, if you can see here that this jump is quite extreme, going from there to there, uh, they're the kinds of reasons why I don't think um, it's it's suitable for using as a crosser in sort of like a shooting game, because it'll be so disorientating for the, the player. Um, however, I, I, do, I do appreciate there are definitely use cases for this, um you know of, of knowing where that bullet is going to go now you can see that it is updating live on the screen um, right now and even if we set the hands to default um because of where it previously was um it's taking that trace into consideration obviously if you don't want to see the trace you can go back to your line trace and turn that to none so that'll get rid of your line trace so there won't be a line trace um and if if you don't want it to be visible, you can change its visibility um, based on that aiming. So you can go to Animan here. Um, where would be the best place to put it? So you could put something like aiming get branch into there like that. If we're aiming, do all this stuff with our crosshair set visibility. So we can change that to hidden. Nope, not hidden. <laughs> change it to visible if it's true. Uh, this is sloppy now, but. Um, if it's false, set visibility again. If it's false, to hidden. Okay. So, cursor isn't um, visible on the screen, but as soon as you go to aim, your cursor is now visible. And as soon as you stop aiming, that crosser disappears. There are just some things to get around. Um, some of them um, sort of visual glitches, let's call them. Um, but... Yep, um, I hope I didn't lose you too much when I, I got to this anchor bit. I do apologize for that. Um, I hope you can appreciate that sometimes there's quite a lot to do in this. And I do tend to like to one take these videos. Um, not for any reason other than if I can't... If I have to chop my video up into 100 bits because of all the mistakes that I made, um, do I actually know what I'm talking about? Um... I, I, I like to feel like a one take in my mind gives me a bit of security that um, I've understood it myself to then pass it on to you um, and that I'm not sort of just piecing all this together from, from nothing really. Um, anyway, enough of that. Thank you for watching. If you've made it all the way to the end, thank you very much. Um, if this was useful for you to to follow, um, please consider giving me a like. Um, if you want to see more stuff like this, um 
you know, pop a comment down below, let me know, or even subscribe, it's up to you. Um, if you want to discuss this any further, or if you want to ask me questions about anything else, again, comments down below, or in the description, there'll be a Discord link. Um, there's quite a lot of us now with, uh, obviously, uh, a mixed variance of knowledge. Um, I like to think I know quite a bit in Unreal, but I do, I definitely don't know everything. Um, this is not a, um, a, a sort of a program or a career that you can say you know everything about um, because there, there are certainly things that I don't know. Uh, but hopefully somebody in the community does. So if I can't help you, somebody might might uh, somebody else might be able to help you or at least point you in the right direction. So it's definitely worth joining the Discord if you're interested in asking questions or finding out more. Um, but yeah, I think I've talked enough now. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video. Thank you. Bye.